Hey guys, Greg Conley here with Trifecta Nutrition. We're back for another Trifecta tip uh, with Dr. Mike Isratel. This time we're talking about casein protein, which, you know, as many of you are familiar, is whey proteins, you know, little brother or, you know, twin, whatever you want to call it. Estranged ex-wife. Yeah, estranged ex-wife. That's kind of forgotten about. Uh, so casein can be very important when it comes to nutritional supplementation. And, you know, we'd love to have Dr. Mike talk about it a bit and uh, tell people, you know, maybe when they can use casein incorporated into their, their nutrition and, and timing. Totally. Thanks for having me. So casein protein is a derivative of milk protein. Anytime you have milk, you can take out the carbohydrates, take out the fats, take out the whey protein, you're left with casein. Casein has some really cool properties. It's very slow digesting, in part because when it gets into the kind of well, water-based environment of the stomach and the intestines, it tends to wrap in on itself because it's a bit hydrophobic, and it forms kind of this, this ball, this bolus, and stomach acid and intestinal enzymes can only really access the surface of this bolus, and thus it takes a while for it to, uh, for those enzymes uh, to break down all of that casein. And thus, anytime you consume casein, you know they've measured it uh, entering the bloodstream for up to seven hours after consumption, which is a good and a bad thing. If you're looking for a great post-workout protein, or you're looking for a protein to take in immediately upon waking to stop catabolism right away, get a lot of amino acids right down, casein is not your bet. However, if you're looking for a protein that is going to allow you to do a couple of things that slow digesting proteins can, casein is really, really, really up your alley. For example, if you are enter in a situation where you need something to eat before bed so that you have a slow digesting protein feeding your muscles preventing their breakdown and helping them grow throughout the night. So imagine you're training really hard, you're sore, your muscles are reconstructing. They don't just take a break when you go to sleep. A lot of reconstruction happens when you sleep. A lot of growth happens and you might as well have some amino acids coming in. Have a casein shake or casein pudding, which is delicious. We do a lot of that at RP. We you mix know. it with peanut butter and you become an addict. After a while, you don't even know who you are anymore. You stop shaving. You've been living in the streets stabbing people <laughs> for casein protein. Don't know if that's happened to either of us. Yeah. I. Ooh. We don't uh, look too shaved. I guess we've been on a casein binge. So casein pudding's great. You can make shakes out of it. People make casein cookies. And it's a really, really awesome uh, tool for preventing muscle loss through the night if you're in a cutting phase or if you're in a gaining phase or maintenance, helping some muscle growth throughout the night. In addition to that, you may find yourself in some situations, for usually work-related situations, in which you can't eat especially high-quality protein source for an extended period of time. For example, if you are at a work conference, let's say, and you know a lot of us have been to these things before, where we go to the conference and they get like you know whatever breakfast and breakfast is fine, and then there's like a snack and a lunch, and the only thing they have for snack, and we've all been there, is just fats and carbs. It's like cheese plate cheese and, and crackers, cookies and yeah. crackers, and you're like, is anyone here in, is interested in their health at all in long term? You look around, you're like, no, I'm the yeah. only one, right? And obviously no one cares about getting jacked or getting lean. So you're in a situation where for maybe six, maybe eight hours, you're not going to have quality access to a high quality protein source. Easy fix. It, sometimes you can't bring sh bars with you or shakes with you. You have you slam a bunch of casein right during breakfast, maybe 60 grams of casein. And that slowly leaches out into the bloodstream during that entire time, which allows you to maintain high levels of amino acids coming into the blood. And it really will supply all of what you need for muscle growth and to stop muscle loss. So that people say, oh, aren't you like into fitness? Don't you have to like eat every two hours? If you do things intelligently, not at all. You get that and 60 gram casein to, rock. <laughs> it, it's tough. It's tough to get down. But hey, look, especially if you're dieting, it's delicious. That's a whole lot of protein coming your way. Mix it with some fats and you get even more delayed digestion. You can get digestion delayed up 10 hours or something like that. That's really cool for the times you might not be able to eat. Let's say you're always dedicated to your fitness journey. You're on a road trip with friends and you know, you go in here, go in there, stopping by looking at national parks and cool stuff. It, not everyone stops every three hours to get a bunch of food. So if you have casein shakes with you, it's a great meal replacement, especially if you mix it with whey. So if you have half casein, half whey, mm -hmm. you have powders, they don't go bad. You can always have them around. It's, it's a perfect meal replacement, especially for those times that you can't eat. So for those situations, I would say casein is a great product. Whey is great too, but it digests so quickly that usually if you slam a bunch of whey and you're at the conference three hours later, you're like, ah, I need to eat more, <laughs> right? But with casein, and I'll tell you what, on a diet, very few foods keep you full, like casein, especially casein pudding. 
it, it looks like, so Casey Pudding, you make it, it looks like it's an infinity amount of stuff. And you're like, oh my god, this is only 25 grams of protein. It takes you forever to eat. And it fills you up like crazy, and you don't get, because it's so slow digesting, you don't get unfull for a really long time. And you find you're not really hungry in your diet, which is pretty much the ideal place to be in a diet. Mm -hmm. So casein, definitely great for dieting. If you're mass gaining, good luck. Good. When you try to drink your casein shake, because it's so filling, you're just like, oh, this is really hard. But hey, if you want to be jacked, you got to do what it takes. Yep. Are there any specific foods that have more casein than others? If if people don't have you know some casein protein uh, way, laying around in powder totally. form. Totally, and even if you have casein protein laying around, you know, sometimes it's still a supplement. It's, it tastes great for people who are used to having supplements. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the funniest things I've ever heard is um, when people say like, oh my God, I got this new brand of, you know, whatever protein and it tastes like a milkshake. I'm like, sh shut up. No, it yeah. doesn't. It tastes like a milkshake because you've been in the fitness industry so long, you've lost your taste buds. Because <laughs> if you give regular people even like the greatest tasting casein, and they're like, this, this is chocolate milk that's gone bad, right? And you're like, uh, sure, why not? You're like, yes. So, so yeah. sometimes you're in the mood for real food, right? Even if you know, shakes are great, but sometimes you want the real stuff. So, most milk products have a, a ton of casein in them, mm -hmm. and uh, all the yogurts do as well. So if you're looking for especially like a good nighttime snack or a snack uh, that gets you going through a couple of meal cycles, gets you going through multiple hours uh, of not eating, yogurt's great. Greek yogurt's amazing. Usually it's very low fat. It can be fat free. It's low in carbs. It tastes good, fine, like especially it. if you pour all kinds of fats and carbs in there, it tastes even better. Uh, but, uh, you know, so Greek yogurt, there's like some Icelandic yogurt now. I just had German yogurt yesterday. Apparently that's a thing that was pretty cool. So uh, all that stuff, it tastes great. You can mix in a bunch of other ingredients. And, you know, I love casein protein. I eat it all the time, but every now and again, you need a break. And I think yogurts and other milk products uh, are really good to go. And one last thing, uh, folks, if you're lactose intolerant, uh, uh, most high quality casein products have all the lactose removed, so it's not a big deal. A lot uh, of people, I've met a lot of people who say, well, I can't have casein as a milk protein because I'm lactose intolerant. I'm like, good news, it doesn't have lactose in it. And they try it and they're like, huh, I feel okay. I'm actually lactose intolerant. Like, if I drink a gallon of milk, it's a nuclear like fallout site, you just clear out. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm you know, in the same category, so oh, yeah. I can't laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's really laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, as far as casein products are concerned, and uh, I can tolerate all the yogurts, uh, Greek yogurts, just fine. No problems at all. So if you're kind of resistant to uh, some dairy products as you're lactose intolerant, I think that casein pro protein, lactate brand, and the derivative brands of milk with lactose removed, and um, the uh, yogurts, I think, uh, are totally fine for most people. Sweet. So some extra ways to get your casein if you don't have any protein handy. Awesome additional tip. Casein, another fantastic tool in your arsenal, you know, when it comes to appetite suppression or making it through a long day or any, you know, any of the things Dr. Mike just discussed. So be back in a few minutes with uh, another nutrition topic. Thanks guys.